Karen is given a presentation about speaking after dinner. She has eight uh, close friends at her home for dinner. There are two instances in her speech where she expects you to interact or interact as her guests. The piece of chocolate in front of you is for one of those interactions. The other will be obvious, so please help me welcome Karen. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guest. Thanks for coming tonight. It's been great having all of you here. I think this was a splendid first meal. <laughs> if I do say so myself. <laughs> As you know, I attend a variety of classes at the Penrose Cancer Center. I just finished a four-week mindfulness meditation class. It was awesome. In it, we learned that meditation can help increase your or boost your immune system. We also learned that it can help alleviate some of the symptoms of stress, anxiety, and depression. And also, it helps with the exhaustion that some of us feel because our minds are always racing a million miles a minute, thinking about all the things that we need to do. The instructor shared a couple techniques with us that I'd like to share with you because I think it applies to everybody, not just cancer survivors. The first one is to be present in the moment. And what that means is just to be, not have your mind always thinking about what I need to do next, but thinking about what I'm doing right now. The other one has to do with breathing. Okay, smart Alec, I know we all need to breathe. But this is intentional breathing. She used this book called Mindfulness, an eight-week plan for finding peace in a frantic world. It's written by a professor at Oxford, Mark Williams, and Dr. Danny Penman, both from England, as well as some other sources. I wondered about what being in the moment meant, because I'm always spinning. My brain is always spinning about what I need to do next. She gave us some really good examples that I'm going to share with you. The first one is, do you ever, when you're getting ready in the morning, we do everything on autopilot. We take our showers, we put on our socks the same way, we do all of those things. Well, the first thing she taught us was to, when you're in the shower, how many of us have gotten out of the shower and did, did we wash her hair? Did I rinse out the conditioner? <laughs> Greg, you probably don't have problem. <laughs> so to be in the moment means to actually, when you're pulling the shampoo off the rack, actually feel it, the texture of it, hit your hand, smell it, massage your scalp, pay attention to what you're doing so that you can give yourself a head massage like your hairdresser does, and then feel the water flowing off of you and just pay attention to what you're doing instead of thinking about all the things that you need to get done today. Another example that she gave us was brush your teeth with your other hand. Think about that. So if we all brush our teeth habitually. I bet if we took a recording of ourselves in the morning, it's probably all the same thing. We don't pay attention to it. So try that. Brush your teeth with another hand. Drive a different way to work. Sit in a different chair at class. Things like that. It allows you to get in touch with your senses, so you can see, feel, think, uh, taste, those types of things more. One of the things I'm going to do right now is what we call a chocolate meditation. Mm. So you're going to get out your chocolates, grab one of your chocolates. <laughs> that just bring an orange for you. <laughs> Open the packet and inhale the aroma. Let it sweep over you. Break off a piece and look at it. Break. Really let your eyes drink in what it looks like, examining it. Now you can put it in your mouth. See 
if it's possible, to hold it on your tongue and let it melt. Chocolate has over 300 different flavors. See if you can sense some of them. If you notice your mind wandering while you do this, simply notice where it went, then gently escort it back to the present moment. After the chocolate has completely melted, you can throw the rest of it away or eat the rest of it. <laughs> but the chocolate tastes so much better after you savor it and think about it. How much better might everything else that we eat or drink taste? Maybe we should have done this before we had this splendor for us. <laughs> Another technique for mindfulness meditation is breathing is to focus on it. Focus on your breath when you're having negative thoughts. So our when uh, we're having a negative thought, it comes into our mind. Some of us try to stop it or push it away. You don't want to do that. You want to acknowledge the negative thought and then breathe. And as you're exhaling, visualize <coughs> exhaling the negative thought. So if I'm feeling self-conscious about my weight and I'm thinking, I need to lose weight. My brain automatically tries to find a solution and it says, okay, you need to go to the gym, you need to go on a diet, you need to do this, you need to do that. Instead, just bring it back to center and exhale the negative thoughts, giving one more confidence. When you start to feel stress or anxiety, just take some deep breaths and let the bad stuff go on the exhale. And now we're going to practice a breathing technique. Okay, we're all sitting straight in our chair. Feet flat on the floor. Close your eyes or lower your gaze. Focus your attention on your breath as it flows in and out of your body. Stay in touch with the different sensations of each in breath and each out breath. Observe the breath without looking for anything special to happen. There is no need to alter your breathing in any way. After a while, your mind may wander. When you notice this, gently bring your attention back to your breath without giving yourself a hard time. The act of realizing that your mind has wandered and bringing your attention back without criticizing yourself is central to the practice mindfulness meditation. Your mind may eventually become calm like a still pond or it may not. Even if you get a sense of absolute stillness, it may only be <coughs> fleeting. Whatever happens, just allow it to be as it is. You can open your eyes and take it in the room again. While you're doing this, you can play soft music. You can play videos with nature scenes. There's apps for your phone now that play rain music or the sounds of the ocean, those types of things. One of the new techniques for relaxing and being in the moment is coloring. And I just started coloring again. And there's all types of different books that you can color from. And coloring books are in the top 10 best-selling books on Amazon.com right now. And when you walk into Barnes & Noble, the first displays you see are coloring books. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a way to relax, that is an excellent way to relax. I hope I got you thinking of new ways to add some peace in your life by living in the moment and breathing away negative thoughts. I'm really trying to focus on eliminating autopilot from my daily routine. Once again, the book is called Mindfulness. And thanks for coming over tonight. Remember to drive a different way home and be in the moment. Mr. Tosin.